Hi, I'm Howard Tierski, CEO of Moving Interactive, with another installment in our Digital Innovation Series. Today we're going to talk about how you structure your digital team. Creating digital products is a tremendously multidisciplinary process, blending creativity, engineering, business strategy, customer support, often legal or regulatory considerations, and more. Here at Moving Interactive, we work primarily with large enterprises and global brands who are launching or operating major e-commerce or media destinations. One question that we get a lot regards the optimal way to organize the various roles and responsibilities that are needed. What part of the organization should own what capability and how to get everyone working together in the best way possible. Naturally, the optimal recipe is going to vary between different organizations, and we work with many clients on tailoring the operating models of their digital teams. However, today, I thought it might be useful to present a base framework that we leverage, the 15 key roles or competencies that go into creating and operating most digital properties. We break these 15 roles into three conceptual teams, the digital business team, the digital technology team, and the extended business team. Though you might divide them differently, what's especially useful is to review this model and see first whether in fact you have all these key roles represented in your organization. If not, you're probably experiencing some pain from the gap. Next, you can ask yourself whether each of these roles has well-defined responsibilities and processes within your organization. And then lastly, look at how these functions work together and whether they're organized in the most effective manner. So there are 15 roles in our model. Depending on the size of your operation, there may be some of these roles for which you have many people. UI designers, for example, perhaps you have four or 10 or 50 of them. And there may be other cases where you have one person who plays multiple different roles. That's all fine, as long as you are still clear that that role exists, and as long as the model you're using is effective. If you're having problems, it can be useful to review this model and consider whether some of the problems might stem from unclear roles, missing roles, or overloaded resources with too many roles. OK, let's start reviewing the roles team by team. First, we'll start with the digital business team. The first role on the digital business team is that of business vision. The owner of the business vision is responsible for defining the key business measures and objectives for that digital property. That includes defining what market segments are we going after and what objectives do we have for each of those market segments. The digital visioneer should be making the final decisions on key product direction, although they may not be doing the legwork to determine all those options. They should be approving perhaps quarterly priorities that the team is presenting to them and acting at that high level. This person may very likely be an executive with many responsibilities for which this digital property is only one. So they're going to rely on a team to queue up the decisions, which ultimately they'll make based on that vision. Now, the second role on the digital business team is the product management role, the product manager. The product manager for a digital property owns that product on a day-to-day -day basis. They're responsible for knowing intimately the metrics for that product and reviewing and consuming and commissioning customer research on an ongoing basis to really understand where it is and where it isn't working for customers. They're responsible for developing and maintaining the ongoing product roadmap, how that product should be continually evolved and changed over time in a manner consistent with the business vision. Then they're the one who can prioritize on a weekly or perhaps bi-weekly basis the backlog of new changes and improvements that are being worked on. They should be developing and or at least approving the requirements, reviewing and approving designs, and probably personally conducting UAT, user acceptance testing, of each release. Ultimately, the product manager is the person who owns the customer experience day to day. And frankly, it's their job to fight to be sure it's not undermined, as well as to liaise with other areas of the organization, including beyond the digital team, 
to make sure that the digital value proposition is being realized for the customer and for the organization. Okay, the third role within the digital business team is that of program management, distinct from product management. The program manager is the one who's responsible for maintaining the long-term plan for achieving the roadmap, including the budgets and resource allocations, and for maintaining the detailed schedule for the current release. The program manager needs to know what's going on across all the teams at any given time. The tasks, the dependencies, the schedule, progress, resources, budget, and risks. And is responsible for ensuring that all the team members are working together and that they have the resources that they need, as well as to identify risks and be a problem solver. The fourth role in the digital, vision, digital business team is the UI UX role, the user interface, user experience role. That person or people are responsible for creating the overall look and feel of the digital product, including its branding, its navigation structure, and for developing and maintaining a set of UI standards that are applied for uh, new work as it's developed. Typically that role is responsible for creating new page designs or interaction models for new features as they're developed, and doing QA of releases when they're ready to go live to make sure that the design has been correctly implemented. The UI UX team should be regularly reviewing site metrics to understand how users are using the site and identify possible new conversion opportunities. They're probably involved in conducting ongoing usability testing to identify possible design issues and will likely be identifying potential new features coming out of their user experience work that would create more value for the customer and they can input those into the product manager or the product management uh, role. The last role that we'll talk about on the digital business team is that of content or content development. So the content role is going to be creating at least all of the non-campaign, the non-marketing or editorial content for the site. And it's their responsibility to make sure the copy on the site is easy for customers or users to understand and is consistent with the brand or voice uh, of the product or site. And that would include articles, instructions, FAQ help content, uh, you know, really any words that appear on the site, other perhaps than pure marketing. And probably will spend a lot of time coordinating with legal, at least in a lot of industries and organizations, to make sure that they're reducing risk around uh, legal compliance issues as it relates to copy. Now working closely with that digital business team is a digital technology team who's responsible for engineering and technical implementation. We generally see five key roles or competencies on that team. The first is that of front-end development. The front-end development role is responsible for first selecting the frameworks and front-end coding standards that will be used for the HTML, JavaScript, possibly Flash, or any other uh, client-side technologies that will be used in the product. They're responsible for defining and maintaining browser standards for which browsers are going to be supported and to what degree and are, are also responsible for writing all of the code that will execute in the browser and as distinct from code that may execute on a server which typically is responsibility of a different role. That would be HTML, HTML5, JavaScript, as well as mobile code which may be uh, uh, executing on, for example, an iPhone or an Android device such as Objective-C or Java code that executes client-side. They're also responsible for then driving requirements to back-end development teams, which we'll talk about in a minute, or data teams or other technical teams as needed to make sure that the full user experience can be implemented. The, and sometimes they may be responsible for certain middle-tier systems, such as content management systems, um, as distinct from the enterprise systems. And that's a good segue to the second role uh, of the digital technology team, and that is the role of back-end development. So the back-end development role manages the core enterprise systems. They may be inventory systems, financial systems, CRM systems, customer data systems, et cetera. Um, they're responsible for then exposing as web services, hopefully and most typically, um, the capabilities that are needed for front-end development. They're responsible for developing and enforcing standards to protect the integrity of those enterprise systems and um, for rec reviewing requests for new back-end capabilities which may come to them from the front-end teams and as defined by the requirements which come from, uh, you know, from the business team. 
and then implementing those, hopefully as per uh, a schedule that's been agreed to uh, across these different roles. Um, the, this role is, should also be responsible for communicating proactively about any planned changes to back-end systems that could impact the front end. Those might be upgrades, outages, et cetera. And for monitoring and maintaining the health of the back-end systems, at least from a software perspective. Now you can see that, that this role has responsibilities that extend beyond just the digital offerings, at least very commonly they do. A key organizational question is often whether those engineers who are working most closely on the web or mobile systems are going to be actually part of a digital team or part of a larger enterprise IT team. And there are arguments both ways. But no matter which way this goes, it's inevitable that in almost all cases, those responsible for the larger enterprise systems will still need to be intimately involved or at least provide substantial support to the digital world. And actually, the same can be said for the next uh, role within the digital technology team, which is that of, of data. Um, so the data role is responsible for developing and maintaining enterprise and digital-specific data models, for actually managing the data and creating and implementing plans for data management and data warehousing, for monitoring the health of databases and scaling them over time as needed, and exposing services or working with the back-end team to expose services for data access and uh, responding to requests from development teams, possibly both front-end and back-end, for changes that may be needed to data architecture over time, for example, new fields that may need to be supported or new tables, and implementing those you know, as, as agreed. The fourth uh, technical role within our digital technology team is that of infrastructure. Another area that's sometimes separate with the digital team versus the enterprise team and sometimes combined. The infrastructure role is responsible for maintaining the physical hardware used for the applications and the data. They are responsible for maintaining typically disaster and business continuity programs, which may include uh, other failover infrastructure in the case of power outages in a data center or, or other catastrophes. Um, they're responsible for maintaining and monitoring the scalability and reliability of the physical infrastructure to make sure that whatever service level agreements have been defined for uptime, performance, et cetera, can be maintained even over time as perhaps the usage of the site scales. They're responsible for implementing any virtualization that will be, uh, that will be done, supporting deployments of new code which need to be moved into production, and for monitoring and proactively managing the security of the infrastructure environment, a very, very key function. And for maintaining and managing multiple environments that are needed for the full development life cycle. So a development environment, staging environments, production environments, et cetera. And lastly, the fifth area of our digital technology team, the fifth role, perhaps the most important to achieving a great customer experience is QA, quality assurance. So the QA role uh, creates and maintains a set of QA standards for code in production. They develop automated and manual test scripts for each system and each release. And uh, they execute whatever testing is to be done, integration testing, browser testing, performance testing, et cetera. They should also be monitoring site metrics to proactively identify problems, which could include integration issues, data issues, even when there is no release or new code pushed. Because most sites today are complex uh, combinations of services that may be calling to various third parties. Obviously, data at any time can, can have issues. So the QA team should have some role in monitoring that on an ongoing basis, not just when a new release is pushed. And though you certainly want to have a QA competency and roles of dedicated QA professionals, it also should be noted that QA also needs to be everyone's responsibility, from the business owner who creates requirements and test scripts, to the developer who must unit test their code, to the design team, that, which, who, as we said before, needs to ensure their designs are properly rendering in different browsers and devices, and the product owner who's ultimately responsible for doing UAT. Okay, the third grouping of competencies, the third team, is what we call the extended business roles. If you recall our first five roles of the digital business team that we talked about earlier, product vision, product management, project management, UI, UX, and content, these were all pretty exclusively focused on the digital property. Whereas the extended business team are roles that are probably focused on a broader business scope than just the digital properties. In fact, it's critical that these folks collaborate closely with the core digital teams 
And they can also help bridge the digital focus to the priorities and initiatives going on in the rest of the enterprise. So these five extended business competencies are as follows. First, marketing. Depending on your business, you may have a dedicated digital marketing team or it may be part of your multi-channel marketing team. But in any case, the marketing team is responsible for some key digital operations. First, they develop offers and campaigns, both on-site and off-site, as well as via email, to drive traffic to the site. They typically manage the email list and governs what can be sent to who, when. They manage and maintain the CRM system. However your marketing is organized, it's very important in most businesses that your online and offline marketing efforts be well coordinated and synergistic. Okay, the second uh, role in our extended business team is that of product or product and pricing. And it varies a little bit depending on what, uh, what industry and what type of digital property we're talking about. But their responsibility is, where, when appropriate, to develop or license or merchandise any products that are going to be sold on the site, to set the pricing, be those for physical products or digital subscriptions, or any deals or offers that are going to be created, and for driving requirements for new digital features that may be needed to align with any new products, which may have their own policies, rules, parameters that need to be defined when ordering, etc. The third role is that of operations truly critical, they're responsible for fulfillment of the offline value proposition to the customer. So in the case of a commerce site, for example, this is obviously the responsibility for picking and packing and shipping whatever the customer's ordered. And there's different components of operations. In the case of a uh, digital video site, these can be the folks that are responsible for ingesting new videos on an ongoing basis and posting them to the site, etc. And you need key, uh, um, key synergy between that operations team that probably has responsibilities beyond any one digital property and what the digital team is doing. Uh, next, we have within the extended, uh, digital, extended business team that of business development. The business development function, again, there's multiple flavors of this, but very often that's focused on looking to create partnerships which can result in increased traffic or, or sales or lower CTA or, or new streams of revenue. And lastly, customer support. Customer support role is responsible for first maintaining knowledge of the digital platforms, policies, known issues and solutions, so they can do the best possible job of helping customers. And then, of course, to be accessible to customers, to assist with questions, problems, etc., tracking customer interactions, and, of course, reporting any issues, be they, or, or levels of satisfaction, or trends back to product management. So in each of these last five areas, these five roles, the key to success is really a balance between focus on the digital world and connection and collaboration and knowledge of what's going on in the digital world as well as the broader enterprise picture. Well, so there you are, the 15 roles. Hopefully that model can be of help to you as you look to self-diagnose self or assess your own organization. The question of how to then organize and define the optimal processes for the interactions between all these roles is something we work with with our clients a lot here at Moving Interactive. But unfortunately, it's a bit beyond the scope of what we can cover in a short video. However, if you have any specific questions we can answer for you, don't hesitate to reach out. Feel free to post a question or IM on any of our social media channels, including Facebook, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, YouTube, or Instagram. Or, I think some people still use email, so you can send one to us at info at movinginteractive.com. Don't forget to check movinginteractive.com for lots of great info and other thought leadership videos and white papers. And thanks for watching today. And I wish you great success in organizing your teams to optimize your digital innovation. <laughs>